Okay, good afternoon, everyone. We are on the record. Today is Monday, the 24th day of January in the year 2022. This is an ad hoc committee meeting to investigate Suez water of the Jersey City Municipal Council. In effort to adhere to social distancing protocols and best practices imposed by the city and state authorities, this ad hoc committee meeting of the Municipal Council will be held virtually as a video conference with public access. We had a scheduled 1 p.m. start. The clock on my computer is showing 1.18 p.m. May we have a roll call for the commencement of this meeting. Councilperson Prinzeri? Here. Councilperson Solomon? Here. And we have also Council President Waterman. Here. Okay, we have three council members in attendance at 1.18 p.m. Slow. In accordance with New Jersey Public Laws of 1975, Chapter 231, the Open Public Meetings Act, also known as the Sunshine Law, adequate notice of this meeting has provided by the posting on a bulletin board of the first floor of City Hall. In addition, this notice of this meeting was similarly disseminated on Thursday, January 20th in 2022 at 7 p.m. and again revised on Friday, January 21st, 2022 at 125 p.m. to the Municipal Council, Mayor, Business Administrator, Corporation Council, and the local newspapers and posters on the city's website. So I can certify as to our total compliance with the Sunshine Law. And I'm going to turn the meeting over to Councilperson Solomon. All right, th thank you, Clerk, and uh, thank you, everyone, uh, for your attendance. We are restarting the committee hearings after the uh, holidays, and thought we had four productive meetings in the fall, and hope that we can wrap things up this winter with, uh, you know, concrete, actionable uh, improvements to, uh, you know, policies at Suez, at MUA, and at OEM. So what I want to do is. You know, released today, and and I'm, you know, uh, interested in, in our, <laughs> how long today's meeting is going to last, just based on the uh, work that's been done. You know, when we adjourned, we had asked a, a series of document requests of Suez, uh, MUA, and uh, OEM, and and as far as I'm aware, we haven't received any of those documents. And then we had sort of asked folks to start to work on, uh, again, concrete tangible policy changes. So we're really going to, you know, just ask where where folks are at uh, on those things. And then, uh, you know, the meeting will kind of be determined based on on the answers to those questions. Um, so uh, I just want to kind of confirm if you can. I see uh, Mr. O'Brien from Suez um, or Directors Puna and Kirsan as well. Uh, I'm on uh, Council with Glenn Kirsan. Thank you, Joe Director. Puna's Appreciate on Great, thank you guys. So why don't I start with this? We requested a number of documents. Um, I have a, a list of them here, and then I may have missed one or two as, as we were taking notes through the meetings, but I don't believe we received any. Um, and so just looking at a couple of things we had requested from Suez was you know, a copy of the emergency protocols that they were using, um, a memo summarizing changes to the emergency protocols uh, after the April 20 and August 20 boil water advisories, and then uh, the last, uh, I think two meetings ago, we had discussed the investigation on the cause of the uh, August boil water advisory, and uh, we wanted to, to have those reports. So uh, starting with just Suez, Jason, can you give me an update on uh, kind of the, the committee's receipt of these documents? Yes, uh, hi everybody. Um, I believe I have, um, Submitted all those documents um, to Joe Cunha um, to then submit to the council. Um, I'd have to go back over that with Joe, um, but I did. I do believe anything that the committee here asked for, um, I've given to the MUA um, to review and then submit to the uh, to the committee. All right. Uh, I will yeah. verify that, uh, Councilman. Um, it's been a minute, and uh, last I recall, I did forward everything over that I had through a certain date at the end of December. Jason, did you forward anything after December? Probably not, right? The, la the last thing I submitted or sent over to you, Joe, was the, um, the list of the um, places uh, for potential bottled water sources. 
the sensitive population locations. OK, that might be where we left off, but uh, I know that we had the. Uh, the PowerPoint presentation that showed um, basically a full detailed synopsis of the entire event. I believe I shared that, but uh, councilman, I'll follow up with you directly to make sure you got that. Obviously, anything that's lingering in my inbox that I did not forward, I apologize and I will forward that. But um, where I thought we left off was uh, the meeting between uh, DPW, MUA and Suez uh, to just finalize some of the protocols that we wanted to put into the final permanent uh, action plan. Uh, mm -hmm. And we have we have worked towards that somewhat, but uh, regretfully we're not ready to give you the final version today. We need a couple more weeks. Uh, I know that we were originally targeting the February meeting as the closeout meeting, and I think we could still meet that if council is willing, if the committee is willing to review the uh, final product in a couple of weeks ahead of the February meeting, if and when we submit it to you in a couple of weeks um, as a review offline. Uh, but that's completely up to you. We're willing to do as many meetings as it takes. Uh, I do want to report that to the end of when we supply water buffaloes and tankers, the MUA has taken the initiative to order to start 10,000 polyethylene, uh, very light uh, one gallon pouches, if you will, with a handle as a hard plastic handle at the top and a hard plastic spout uh, for ease of carrying water, since that seems to be the number one problem with uh, supplementation of water via large volume. Uh, we got these for a dollar each, so it's it's pretty affordable. When you think about it, if uh, each person gets two of these, it's two gallons. Two gallons is essentially about a case or just over a case of water. Uh, but as you might imagine at a dollar each, it's significantly cheaper and easier to deploy. We will keep these in our stock and uh, assist with deploying these anytime it's necessary. Uh, hopefully it won't be, but obviously we'll be ready. And uh, we'll see how far 10,000 gets us and order as, as needed. So that's gonna be written into this policy as well, into our, uh, as part of our commitment on the MUA side. But I think that's going to help significantly, especially when it's not necessarily a boil water advisory event, such as some localized water event where maybe a block or two or, or multiple are out of water for, for an extended period, more than just your regular shutdown to repair, which does occur on occasion, I'm sure each and every one of you have experienced that in your ward or all over the city, really. So uh, I do have that to report, but uh, we will be meeting over the next uh, week or so to finalize a plan. There are still a few particulars, uh, but yeah, no, one thing I definitely want to have in the, count, in the committee's uh, hands is, the locations that we understand are the sensitive populations. That's the key part of this uh, action plan, in my opinion. Um, the rest will kind of fall into place once we have that nailed down. So, Councilman, I'll follow up with you immediately after this meeting just to make sure. Um, and if it's me that didn't send it, then I'll disseminate it immediately. Sure. So, um, you know, I, uh, things get lost in spam filters, but, um, you know, I do not recall receiving any documents since the presentation that outlined the timeline, uh, which is one of our first meetings, I, I think, in November. Uh, so it sounds like uh, Sue hasn't been sending them. So, you know, Joe, if you can, one, you know, forward me any emails that you did send, and uh, we'll see who got them and, and where they ended up. Uh, and then, two, if you can, you know, uh, as soon as possible, uh, send those documents over. I mean, I think from my perspective, it's really important to have a chance to review all of that because uh, that's going to inform the final. Uh, kind of products of the committee. So uh, I, I just want to reiterate the importance of getting those over uh, as soon as possible, and we will, um, you know, review what, what's there and then uh, you know, distribute to the rest of the committee and go from there. But, uh, you know, it's going to be really important to wrapping everything up to to getting all that, that in uh, as soon as possible. Of course, absolutely. Right. So in terms of, uh, you know, then the, the next one is reviewing the work and you started to kind of get into that um for the meetings but uh do you let's just start very quickly you know can you can you just sort of very clearly outline you know what it is you guys have started to uh work through and and what are the outstanding items we do have it on the agenda here that we had sent out a couple of the bullet points we were looking to to see addressed 
Sure, absolutely. So, so the the key the key time frame uh, portion of a boil water event or something along those lines, a reportable event, is obviously dictated by the NJDEP. We are just going to formalize that in kind. We can't deviate whatsoever. Uh, and unfortunately, and, and I don't know that a large part of the public knows this, that is what actually causes us to uh, seem like we've been sitting on information because the DEP will not allow dissemination. And, and if I'm rehashing, I apologize. I just want to make sure that you all understand that, uh, you know, if I could put out or if we could put out that information immediately, we would. But we have to follow the uh, the steps. And unfortunately, sometimes it equals uh, two and three days after the initial report before we're allowed to go public with that. In fact, the um, August event of 2020, we were um, chastised for coming out way too soon, in their opinion, with the information. But as you all know, you received the complaints that we took too damn long with it. So, uh, you know, that's that's something that we're going to have to reiterate and 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 explain and that's going to be the backbone of the timeline that we put forth on this SOP uh, standard operating plan in, in response to an event and then figuring out the parameters uh, of the sensitive populations and water supplementation. I think that was the major other uh, issue we had in September uh, immediately following Ida and possibly even back in 2020 though it wasn't as big of an issue. It, it really became an issue because a commitment was made Commitment was not followed through on, and obviously the microscope was on at that point. A lot of frustrated folks, so we want to make sure that never happens again. But uh, as far as the DP stuff, we are in agreement because we have to be, and uh, we are working to finalize the sensitive populations, Councilman. To your point, that's exactly what we're working on right now. Uh, once that's done, I believe the rest will fall into place. Okay, um, let me just reiterate a couple of the other things. You know, I was looking to. to see and then I'll, I'll turn it over to council president and council and friends area to see if there are things to add um you know we're, we're looking to make sure that the emergency communications are, are clearly supplemented uh, we want to explore additional languages and really use this as a model we know that the, many of the forms are you know 80 percent uh, standardized so we want to explore them in as many languages as possible i think we had set a couple different ones out of arabic uh, gujarati um, uh, to Tagalog, a few others. Um, uh, we're, we're looking at an, an update on the uh, water quality monitoring. Uh, I believe Mr. O'Brien had discussed. Uh, we have the large aqueduct, and uh, uh, the sensors only detect uh, potential change in the quality of water uh, between the aqueduct and and the entryway to Jersey City, and so that's a, a large stretch. And wanted to understand the proposal to significantly improve the water quality monitoring on that site. Um, we wanted to understand plan to increase subscriptions to both the Suez and uh, SWIFT 911 alert systems, uh, specifically uh, with Suez looking at you know tenant populations and how we can um, significantly increase the, whether they be residential or commercial tenants um, and how they are included. Um, and we were looking at, as you were talking about, Director, the water distribution plans, uh, sensitive populations, public communications for the range of events. Obviously, boil water advisory being the most serious, but uh, you know, a, a small water main break that still loses water for a couple hundred people. We want to know what the plans are so we can be very clearly connected. Um, and then I would uh, uh, add it was sort of connected in one of the bullet points is just understanding the, the plan around city council members. How are we informed? Who is our points of contact or point of contact? Uh, and making sure that's clear. Um, and then uh, we wanted to understand, particularly with OEM, connecting to Suez and MUA, how, how we intended to use the wireless emergency alert system in the future. Um, what, what would have to trigger an event uh, for us to use that as a way to alert the public uh, there? Those, those were my issues, and it sounds like you're, you're working on some of them, but not all of them. And I think it's you know, really important that you know, we have a, a, a draft in place uh, to, to look at all those things. So why don't I pause there and just let the council president, Councilwoman Prinzeri, see if, they, if you have anything to add on other things you guys are looking for um, based on our initial conversation. Um, no, I think you covered all my concerns, James, when it came to like the point of contact. I wanted to make sure we had that because going yeah. forward, it's the city is so large. Sometimes if you don't have a center point of contact, we, we just walking in, you know, going in circles. So 
that's really important to me. And not only that, though, the notification to the public. You know, I, I know we laughed at it the other time when I was said years ago, you know, a police officer would just go around. And, and I think that has to be in consideration because not everybody is on um, Internet. Nobody have tech. Not everyone has technology. So there have to be something in the plan that people who are not on technology could be notified. So that that's my concern. Thank you, Council President. We'll sort of, you know, supplement all the current bullet points with adding those things. But I just think that overall communications point is, is key there. Um, and uh, Councilman. And the only I mean, that pretty much covers it for me, just making sure again that um, we have, you know, multiple ways for our residents to be noticed um, or notified. I think though too, if we are going to go, you know, old scout stuff bullhorn or like a recording, just to make sure too that some of those recordings are in multiple languages, because there are like, like whole buildings, for example, over off of Burton Avenue, when the, almost the entire building is Egyptian, and it's only the kids that speak English. But if the kids are in school, they can't translate for their parents. So I think that that is also going to be really important for um, for that kind of notification, how we make that work. I'm not, you know, they, but there, there's got to be a way. Um, and then the only other thing I would also add is um, for point of contact, just to ensure that however that's being communicated out has a capacity to have um, the most people on. Because I know during COVID there were issues when we first started doing the um, conference calls with everybody jumping on. They had to segment out people. So some of us were on the beginning of the week call. Some of us were on the end of the week call to share information, and that's fine. But with these, you know, with these water outages, we don't have the luxury at that time. So just also, you know, as we saw too with the with the Zoom meeting for the redrawing or the rewarding, what happens when you don't have the maximum capacity, um, which causes even more frustration in a very frustrating time. Um, and then finally, too, as it relates to, I think that the, the pouches are a good idea. I just, again, it all comes down to execution and making sure that each location gets a proper allocation in a timely fashion. You can have the best tools in the world, but if you don't have the right plan to implement, you're still not going to be able to execute. So um, those are the only other things that I would add to the list, but, but the communication piece internal and external is absolutely key. Great, thank you, Council. And we'll, we'll again uh, supplement all the things we've done. Um, so let me just ask our Director Kuna and then uh, Mr. O'Brien and Director Kirsten, do you guys have any questions for us to clarify what we're sort of looking for um, as you guys are, are working through all these things? Uh, from the MUA's point of view, Council, from my point of view, uh, also, I, I, I should have been clearer before. From the MUA standpoint, those were the main issues that we were concerned with because that's what we had heard and that's what I was reporting on. But absolutely, all the other points you, you mentioned and Council President mentioned and Councilwoman Mira mentioned are, are also very important. Um, many of which we have to work with Suez on and the city communication side. Um, we did meet with the uh, communications division at least once, and we'll probably have to meet with them uh, multiple times thereafter. Uh, it's our understanding that there are some tools that are uh, either being underutilized or, or just not really well known as to whether it would work out. We think it will, but yeah, that's going to take some cooperation from beyond this subcommittee as well. And I think uh, Greg's actually, Greg Kearse has been uh, working with them in the past on this. Um, so. So to, to your point with the communication side, yeah, absolutely. The city, MUA and Suez lockstep, obviously leading the way with you, uh, MUA and Suez so that we meet the DEP requirements first. And then from there, we just blitz everybody in every way possible, as clearly as possible. And yeah, look, the bullhorn, that's not a bad idea. I mean, it is the, it always worked when I was a kid. I remember hearing about it all the time and, and we got the news out there. It's just a matter of getting the cooperation and the ability to get it done, right? Uh, once we put it in writing, it's 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 set, and that's it. And I mean, modifications can always be made, but um, yeah, no, absolutely. And I think, uh, Councilman, just to verify, the sheet you were reading off of is basically the last agenda we had, right? Yeah, that's the agenda points. that uh, yeah that that we sent out in advance of this meeting. Yeah, correct. And okay. I think uh, so. So from Laura sent that out in in December, I think the twenty second is when she sent out this and then it's basically the exact same thing that we sent out for this meeting. Okay. Yeah, so so from my point of view, it's very, it, 
it's from my side, it's clear what you are all looking for. Oh, great. From the Suez side, I, I don't have any questions. Yep. Great. Thank you, Jason. Councilman uh, Greg Kears here. Just a, a, a couple of points. Uh, sure. From a historical perspective, uh, back in 1988, when we lost the aqueduct and the city was virtually without water, one of the things that we de were dependent on was the assistance of the National Guard in the uh, use of the water buffaloes. Now, I was a motorcycle officer at the time, and we were dispatched to uh, various points throughout the county and, in fact, throughout the state to bring those into the city. Unfortunately, there's not many of them left around anymore. I've been working on um, um, some availability. There are some out there that I'll share with Director Cunha. Maybe it's a possibility we could purchase uh, several of those and have them available should the need arise to, uh, you know, for deployment, because that's always a big issue. We have one water tanker. However, it's primarily used for non-potable water, for firefighting capabilities. And as I mentioned during one of the previous meetings, uh, Deputy Chief Daly, who's assigned to the OEM staff, uh, oversees the operation of that for the North region. But there again, uh, can the tankers be converted? Yes, they can, but there's a, a lengthy sanitary process involved. So I think having these smaller buffaloes that could be uh, transitioned around the city as necessary would uh, would be a, a good uh, uh, piece of equipment to have. As far as the notification side, uh, we granted access to the MUA for the early alert system. I don't know whether Stan's on board. I, I saw him on the invite list, but that's something that can be coordinated. And I think the main thing is, is one constant uh, clear message uh, coming from one source and all sources are in agreement that this is what we're dealing with. This is the message has to be sent out and then obviously updates. We also have to be uh, ensure that our city web pages are, are tied into that and they're updating the information as, as we're getting it. Uh, to the council president's point, uh, Joyce, I was I rode a radio car for a good many a years and yes, that is correct. It's a good way to get the information on. It's actually part of the emergency plan. Uh, we just need the uh, cooperation of both police and fire to uh, get that out there when and if the need arises. So I appreciate that, Director. That's very helpful context for us. So I think, you know, what we're looking for, as you heard what all of us um, are, are hoping to see, you know, I think to the extent you're able to send uh, both obviously the documents we've requested as well as any plans you're working on in advance, that would be helpful because it gives us some chance to look at them and provide comments. Um, and then, you know, our hope is to kind of, you know, really um, grill you guys on these plans on the set. Uh, so we're sort of really looking to have good, detailed, thoughtful plans where you guys have done the the homework to to really uh, think through the trade-offs and the and the challenges of implementation as we go through this. And then, you know, if we feel like we need to do another round after the seventh, then we'll schedule you know one or two final meetings. But uh, you know, I'm really hoping that we uh, you know kind of work together to to produce some you know important changes and improvements to the system over the last 18 months, and then uh, we can make sure they get implemented. You know, with that, I think that's it for me. Is there anything else, Council President or uh, Councilwoman Prince mm -hmm. you guys want to add? No. To the no, I'm good. Thank you. I'm fine, thank you. Great. All righty, um, I think we're, we're good, Clerk. So um, do you want to uh, close out or do you want a motion? Sure, so I just need a motion to adjourn at 1.42 p.m. Motion. I'll make a motion. Motion was Second. made by Councilperson Prinzeri and seconded by Councilperson oh. Solomon. On the motion to adjourn at 1.42 p.m., all council members present by acclamation, please say aye. 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 We are out of here at 1.42 p.m. Thank you so much, everybody. The council members, council president, uh, all members behind the scenes making this possible. Um, and anyone who joined us today, uh, just for a little tidbit uh, for Microsoft Teams, just make sure your Microsoft Teams is up to date 
uh, for our next meeting because we did have some issues showing people's faces, even though their camera is on. Uh, the camera when they were speaking, uh, they weren't able to be seen. So you got to make sure that you have if you have any updates on your computer, make sure your Microsoft Teams is updated as well. With that being said, uh, I just like to say teamwork makes a dream work. Have a great rest of the afternoon and stay safe, everybody. Take care. Thanks. Bye bye. Take care, everyone. Thank you.